Europe needs creativity. That was a call from the EU about 10 years ago. The call was caused by the understanding that the progress of nanotechnology will depend on a skilled workforce. 10 years ago. In Lund, we have people thinking out of the box all the time. And so they did when it came to education. So 12 years ago, the engineering nanoscience program started at Lund University. Um, what the EU called for was educations, which were not the traditional ones, which could educate a workforce that was going to take nanotechnology to something new. A traditional education can be pictured like this. It's three, three years of basic education and two years of advanced courses, leading to a master's degree. Or this could be a picture of the mechanical engineering education or chemical engineering education or whatever. If you want to have interdisciplinarity into your education, then most universities do it the easy way. They put interdisciplinarity on top of the basic block. So they can reuse the basic courses from engineering physics or mechanical engineering or whatever. This has one problem, because the interdisciplinarity has a tendency to be quite shallow. Because during the last two years, you also have to have room for your master thesis. So in Lund, we do it upside down. We start with the interdisciplinarity already from the very first beginning. The first three years are full of interdisciplinarity. And then you put a specialization on that, a specialization for the two last years. And the specialization also has a tendency to be interdisciplinary. Because if you have an interdisciplinary introduction, you are used to working across borders. So even though there are a couple of specializations defined on this education, people tend to end up somewhere in between. To do this, you need a strategy. And the strategy has to be full of planning. Because if you don't plan your interdisciplinarity into the first three years, then you build an education which will be ten years long instead of five years. So good planning is the most crucial part of this education. You need to have your courses connecting. You need to have courses with tightly coupled together, not to lose momentum, not to lose time. So the first three years are very carefully planned and also stick together, all the courses. But you also have to plan for communication, and this is something that we realized after some time. Interdisciplinarity needs communication skills, but interdisciplinarity also leads to communication. So this works both ways. You also need to plan platforms for the students where they learn to fly. Because these interdisciplinary skilled students, they want to fly. So they need a place to try. We educate what I call the integrating engineer. The engineer integrating subjects, integrating all over the area. You always should ask yourself, is this really something different? Isn't this just a chemical engineer in disguise? Isn't this just another way of piling up courses in a curriculum? I will give you my picture of the integrating engineer. And it starts here. This is a beginner coming, coming to Lund University. Could be any student. They have an area of interest and there is a border to the unknown, which is quite long, and the student, they might actually have an interest in one very certain area, so they extend their area of knowledge in that direction. This could be a chemical engineer, for example. Of course, the border to the unknown grows, so the student becomes even more aware of what is out there. 
the more you know, the more you know that you don't know. The nanoscience engineer expands her area in all directions. But I can't say that the nanoscience student is particularly more skilled in studies or more intelligent. So there will be holes in the area of knowledge. But this is not bad. Because the student has been out there, out there beyond the holes, meeting expertise from many different areas. So the student is aware of what is out there. And the holes also has a border to the unknown. So the border to the unknown is even longer for an engineering nanoscience student. And this is good because they become aware. And of course, the students learn to jump. They actually know what is out there, and then they are not afraid of asking. But we have realized that interdisciplinarity is not enough. Because even the integrating engineer sits in her box, thinking about problems, solving problems, and preferably solvable problems. And this worries the students when they come out and have graduated. Because the world out there is not full of solvable problems. The world outside is something different. It's full of things like ethics, business, sustainable development, economics, governance, even politics. And how do you prepare your integrating engineer for this? We are led by our students. So they actually pointed out this weak point and told us to take the opportunity to do something very different. We were supposed to create a course on sustainable development a couple of years ago. And we did even this upside down. There is a whole branch of research going on on how to educate engineers in soft issues like sustainability or safety issues. So we actually relied on this research when we built up our course. We were inspired by climate summits in Bali, in Copenhagen. So we knew that our course should end with a conference. A 24-hour conference where the students had to agree on a subject which they were not very comfortable with. The course on sustainability ended with a conference, but it started a little bit softer for our students with lectures. Lectures on sustainable development, on sustainable economy, on sustainable consumption, but also on rhetorics, on how to argue, how to write documents. So the students were presented to a scenario a couple of weeks into the course, a real, real scenario where different stakeholder groups consisting of students should have an opinion on this scenario. They discussed in stakeholder groups, they wrote documents on their position on this um, scenario, they met in intergroups where they discussed and uh, try to agree, they went back to their stakeholder groups and then a 24-hour conference that should lead to a document on sustainable development. And they should all agree. A course like this could not be examined by a written exam where you solve problems. We examine it by a press conference. And there a student has to stand up has to defend something that she might not at all be satisfied with, because everything is compromises. But there is a moment of learning of how to work. And, for example, politics is obvious, suddenly. The benefits of such a course design are quite many, and I will just show you a few of them. Interdisciplinarity is emphasized and it's also required in a course like this. 
The course is reflecting reality because we build the course around a scenario which is attached to reality. It's non-static because the course leaders always have to write new scenarios, so there will always be a new part of the course. And it is quite untraditional, and the students and teachers learn together. We sometimes call these kind of courses for anxiety-provoking. And anxiety-provoking activities are part and should be part of higher education. Because if there are no anxiety-provoking activities, it might be education, but not higher education. So the students are anxious and they are provoked. But it leads to something good. Because I do believe that whoever employs an engineer that has been out there, whether it deals with research or whether it's anxiety-provoking activities, she will be interesting. And who then does employ our students or our engineers? Well, um, we have up until today had about Soon we will have 200 graduated. And the first 40 of them, they became PhD students, mostly all of them. They are here in the audience today, many of them. And that is not very strange, because if you start an education and you expose your students to cutting-edge research from day one, they of course are interested in research and they, they want to pursue that. But today, we see students all over. They are at small companies, at big companies, at research-intensive companies, or at companies that you could never associate with nanotechnology. Interdisciplinarity can be built into a curriculum from the very first day, I'm sure. Interdisciplinarity leads to high awareness about surrounding competences, but not necessarily high awareness about, for example, sustainability or safety issues. To reach that awareness, you need anxiety-provoking activities in your education. And I do believe that we would need even more of that. And this is Lund University's answer to the cry from EU on creativity. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. I wish all universities were thinking like that and <laughs> doing the interdisciplinary ed engineering courses in this way, understanding what it's all about. Who has some comment or question now? <coughs> you all want to... Sp yeah, well, here is... Where is the mic? I think you should start in this <laughs> instead. <laughs> um, to overcome anxiety at some point, it is always good to have at least one foot on safe ground. So how do you make sure that the students also have this one foot <laughs> on safe ground. You mean in the course or in the education? <coughs> in the education. Of well, <laughs> I would say that the, the education is very much so that, I mean, there are parts that are anxiety-provoking in a totally other way, because research could be anxiety-provoking for the students. <laughs> so I think that they, they train that very much. Uh, during their education, not even, I mean, ask Lars about his first course on, uh, on uh, this curriculum. Uh, I could define it as anxiety-provoking, I must say. <laughs> but still, still, we have basic courses from the beginning in physics, in mathematics. They follow the same curriculum as many engineering students do. So I do believe that they feel safe. Uh, they study mathematics, for example, together with other uh, curricula, students from other programs. So that is, uh, that's some sort of safety at the beginning at least. And a course like this is not thrown at the students until year three. 
We have one more. Yeah, hello. My name is Johan Marnfeldt. Uh, I graduated as a master's student uh, 1992 from Lund University here. Uh, I think that interdisciplinarity uh, sounds very great when you talk about that. Uh, I think it's a good job you're doing. But what I can see today and what I work with is trying to take theory, ideas, and make them into practical projects. Mm -hmm. uh, practical mm -hmm. products that you can actually mm -hmm. sell. I started mm -hmm. five companies mm -hmm. so far. Uh, and what I missed when I studied was the practical parts of this, yeah. where you actually could sit down beside a spectrum analyzer mm -hmm. or whatever kind of unique instrument with a soldering iron or uh, whatever tools mm -hmm. and, and create, mm -hmm. create with your bare hands. Yeah. Because that was the way after words I learned and I had to go back to my school books and I started realizing how mm -hmm. to take theory to practical products. Yeah. So that's just something I want to emphasize that I think is important. It's true. We try to do that in our education as well since we have as the l also parallel to this sustainability course we have a course called uh, Project Nano Engineer where the students work in groups on real problems, on nano problems, where they actually could do soldering or microscopy or whatever. Um, this course is expanding now, I would say, because it's, um, there are more parts of um, real, real problems in the course now than there might have been from the beginning. But it's still a course running over half a year, so the students at least realize that things take time in reality. Okay, thank you very much, Elizabeth. <coughs> Go on.